Yeah, so guys, it is Wild here, and today I'm going to be going over five easy steps to boost your CS2 FPS in 2025. I want to make this super quick and easy to follow along with. So just before we get into the steps, I need to tell you about today's video sponsor, which is Skins Monkey, the safe, automated, easy-to-use CS2 trading site that gives you an insane 35% deposit bonus for every cash deposit when using code WILD. Also, by using the code, you can claim up to a $5 free bonus on your first $100 trade. No deposit needed. It's definitely worth trading at least $100 on that first trade, just to make sure you're making the most of it. And don't worry, there are a ton of deposit methods, so it's super easy to load up. All you need to do is click the top link in the description, sign into the site with your Steam, and using the filters, you can find some skins that are just right for you and trade away any of your old skins that you're bored of. And in case you have any issues, they also offer 24-7 live chat support. So what are you waiting for? If you want to grab yourself some fresh new skins for 2025 from their crazy amount of skins up for grabs, make sure to go and check them out. But yeah, let's get back to the video. So guys, starting off with step one, the first thing we're going to go over is your network. Yes, guys, you need to optimize your network. So if you're playing on wireless through your Wi-Fi, then yeah, that needs to stop if possible. Obviously, not everyone can just swap to wired, but yeah, plugging a cable into the back of your computer is going to massively reduce your ping and overall latency. But I do understand some people's routers are kind of far away from them in their house. So what you can get is one of the little boosters, which plugs into a power socket, which you can then plug your PC into there, which obviously it's not as good as normal wired, but it's still so much better than wireless so yeah guys please if you can just do not play on wireless unless you really really have to and then obviously the other thing you can do is just upgrade your internet if possible and i'm only saying this because there are a lot of people who are on like super old network plans or maybe like your family they set up one and yeah your family could still be paying like some crazy high price for pretty slow speeds whereas they could increase that speed a lot and pretty much pay nothing more but yeah i mean obviously that's a case by case thing so you can look into that yourself but guys that takes us on to the next point which is hardware. So yeah, guys, hardware is super, super important. I actually made a video going over the best like value for money hardware that you can have. So I'll leave that linked down in the description. But just to round up that video, the main thing you need to focus on, at least for CS2, is to upgrade your CPU, guys. This is the heavy lifter for CS2 and will absolutely pump out a ton of FPS if you have the right type of CPU. And in case you didn't know, that is one of the X3D processors. So that's the 5800X3D, the 7800X3D, or the 9800X3D. Either one of those work. Obviously, though, the 5800X3D is quite a bit cheaper. And it doesn't have to be a 5800X3D. It could be one of the... It could be like a 5700X3D. I just recommend the 58, the 78, and the 98 because they are like the best version to pick. But if you can get one of the other X3Ds, then that'll do fine. It's mainly just having that 3D V-cache, which makes a huge difference on CS. When it comes to your other parts, like it doesn't matter too much. Obviously, you've got to have like a competent GPU, but you don't need like some crazy like 5090 giga pc to be able to run cs it's you know massively based on the cpu your ram as well i mean you just want at least 16 gigs and then when it comes to your storage this is one where you do probably want to have at least an m.2 drive so that your game can run as fast as possible because yeah i mean i don't know any of you guys if you had or still have a hard drive but yeah sometimes they can take a very very long time to just do anything and yeah this kind of takes us on to step three which is to maintain your pc so yeah guys that means like clearing out your drives like there's so many people and hey, I'm not, you know, I'm not, it's, it's, not, it's a pretty normal thing. Like a lot of people will have had their PC for years and will just have so much clutter and video clips, etc. Just taking up a ton of storage. When it comes to M.2s, you want to keep at least 20% free so your system doesn't choke. But I mean, in my opinion, you want like 99% of it free if possible. Obviously, if you're recording stuff or you need to store stuff, then sure, you're going to have to take up some storage. But if certain things can be kept in the cloud or uploaded, or if you just have haven't had a clean out in a long, long time, then yeah, maybe it's time to do something like that. There are multiple softwares. I mean, the most popular one is CC Cleaner and I'm not sponsored in any way by them. I'm just saying like that's one that a lot of people choose. I mean, there's multiple other ones. Go and do your own research. But what I would recommend and what I've done a lot of times is just fully resetting my PC. So yeah, if you guys want to do that, I could either make a video or you guys can go and do your own research on how to do that. But yeah, your PC does feel amazing when it has been like fully reset. So especially if you're just going to be gaming on it, then maybe that's that's worth it but yeah if you have work stuff or school stuff then yeah it's not as simple as just being able to reset so just the point is clear out your pc you don't want all of the drives filled to the brim slowing your system down trust me i know it's long but it's worth doing then guys for step four the next thing is to tweak
tweak some window settings. So guys, this is real quick for NVIDIA users. Bring up NVIDIA control panel. And then in the top left hand corner, make sure you've got adjust image settings with preview selected. And then just go down here and click use my preference emphasizing performance. And then if we select manage 3D settings, the other setting we want to change is power management mode to prefer maximum performance. And potentially the other setting would be anisotropic filtering. You can change this to application controlled. I'll get into that in the next step. But yeah, just click apply. And for NVIDIA users, that's all good. Then just for anyone on PC, what you want to do is search up mouse settings and then go to where it says additional mouse settings. And as you can see, this will pop up. Then guys, you want to click on pointer options and then make sure enhanced pointer precision is unchecked and then click apply and OK. Technically, you shouldn't have to do this, but I always do it just in case. Then guys, on the left hand side, select gaming. Make sure that game bar is turned off. Make sure the captures are also just off completely. And then make sure for the third option under game mode, game mode is turned on like guys this is super important if you're on windows 11 then go into graphic settings and if we scroll down as you guys can see here we have cs2.exe make sure this is set to high performance by clicking on it go into options and yeah just making sure high performance is selected and click save then you can also scroll back up and click change default graphic settings and make sure that hardware accelerated gpu scheduling and optimizations for window games are both set to on one other thing i like doing guys is going to privacy and security making sure that everything is protected then going down to find my device and making sure that my location settings and all of this is turned off because, I mean, unless maybe you're using a laptop, then you might want to have this stuff turned on. But for me with a desktop, like it's not moving anywhere. I mean, if we were to get burgled, then sure, that would be bad. But no, you don't need these settings on. And that's the same going back to then general. This is just letting Windows track a bunch of stuff in the background, which obviously uses up resources on your PC. I also turn speech off, inking and typing off, diagnostics and feedback, activity history. And then, yeah, as I said before, location, I just turn this off. But yeah, the point is you just want to turn a bunch of the nonsense that Windows has running in the background off. And actually, guys, talking about nonsense running in the background, one thing a lot of people don't tend to do is disable startup apps. So from your desktop, just search up Task Manager and then go to Startup Apps. You can then run through all your startup apps and disable whichever ones you don't want to be starting up as soon as the PC starts. And yeah, by default, a lot of these will be enabled. So yeah, you can just go through and disable whichever ones you don't want, which will help your PC run a little bit smoother because it won't just have like 10 apps open as soon as your PC starts. But yeah, guys, that moves us on to the final step, which is your in-game settings. And funny enough, that actually starts outside of the game. So yeah, if you're an NVIDIA user like myself and you want to play 4x3 stretched, on NVIDIA control panel, you want to come down to adjust desktop size and position and make sure full screen is selected and do the scaling on GPU and make sure override the scaling mode set by games and programs is checked. Make sure your highest refresh rate is selected and then just click apply. Then coming over to Steam, right clicking on CS and clicking properties and making sure that dash no reflex and plus FPS max zero is set in your launch options. I just have allowed third party software for when I'm recording a video like this, but you guys don't need that. Now guys, if we come over to your CS settings, at the moment, I'm using full screen windowed, but that's just because I'm recording a video and it makes it way easier. Normally, I would play full screen. I also prefer 4x3 stretch. So yeah, normally I do full screen, 4x3, and then it's up to you what you want to play on. If you play on a lower resolution, there is less GPU load. So in theory, it is better to play on this as your latency will be lower. So a popular res that pretty much all the pros use is 1280 by 960. So you can give it a go. If you like it, great. If you don't, if you think it's a bit blurry, then definitely try out 1440 by 1080 as this does look a lot crisper but still gives you the same effect as 1280 by 960. Of course guys you want to make sure to select your highest refresh rate possible but guys the in-game settings that is what a lot of you guys will be here for. One thing I will say before changing these it is actually recommended to switch to full screen windowed because then you can like change all of these one by one and your game isn't going to have a fit doing it. But yeah starting off with boost player contrast you can have this enabled or disabled it's up to you. V-Sync you definitely want this disabled and then as you can see here guys we actually don't have any of the reflex settings because yeah we've disabled reflex because because it just doesn't work on CS2. I know some of you guys, if you're playing other games or you've just come onto CS and you're trying to optimize your settings, you'll think, wait, what is this guy talking about? What do you mean? No reflex, reflex is good. And yes, it is. Reflex is amazing, guys. Just not on CS2. Maybe one day, but yeah, for now, don't use it on CS2. It doesn't work. And then remember guys, in launch options, we set our FPS to zero, which basically just means it's uncapped. It can go unlimited if it wants. In menus, it's set to a thousand. I mean, this really doesn't matter. But then guys, here are the presets. I'll zoom into them. Them. These are the settings that you want. I'm not going to yap on about them, but I will actually give you an alternate if you don't like.
like how like bad these graphics look if you still want your game looking okay and your skins looking okay then you can change your settings to this and yeah skins will look way better and won't look all blurry and you'll be able to use anisotropic 2x because back in the nvidia settings we made it so that your game decided so yeah you either can have this as bilinear which is the lowest possible but yeah if you want skins to look okay you do need this on at least 2x and then your model and texture on at least medium so yeah guys they are the five quick and easy steps to boost your fps on cs2 and have the lowest input latency possible if this video helped you out make sure to leave a like on it and let me know down in the comments what fps you get in cs2 also guys we're really close to 20,000 subscribers now so if you haven't already a sub would be much appreciated as i said at the start of the video make sure to check out skins monkey and again a massive thank you to them for sponsoring this video and making it possible but yeah guys that's pretty much it